God. I have a message that I've got to hit fast and try to get done because I've got a lot to say. <laughs> What's new? Yeah. <laughs> but I've got a lot to say to try to get in that uh, um, I'm probably going to uh, encourage people that aren't here because we've got a lot of people in different places. I realize this is the holiday weekend and I know some people are out of town that, uh, uh, you know, that would normally be here. But I want to preach a message today, and I've, I've been waiting on this, but what do we need to take into the year of 2021? Now, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, different places that I go, especially if I go on the mission field, I've got about 80 trips into 70-some different nations. I, I don't know, it's about 85. I've, I've, got, I've got over a million miles, air miles, flying around the world and what have you. But I have a particular drawer in my desk that I keep all the stuff that when it comes to going on a mission trip or going to a third world country, uh, that I've got all that stuff there. So when I think of going to some place like Uganda, or if I go to, uh, you know, the Philippines, now going to France is not too hard. God lets me go to France every now and then to sort of say thank you for going to the jungles. But, uh, but if you're going to the jungles or you're going to a place like that, I've, I've got certain things I take with me that I know that I need going into that setting. I, have, I actually have some things in my closet. It's my missions bag, and it has, it has certain things in there that I know that I need going if, if I'm going on a mission trip, all right? Now, if it's, I'm not a big hunter, but I, you, and I didn't even hunt this year, but you know, if I'm going out in the woods and going to be sitting in the woods and, and what have you, I, there are certain things I take to go hunting. I know, I know that I need to go hunting, you know, that I don't necessarily always carry on me all the time. So I know if I'm going to go hunting, if I'm going to go deer hunting, there's certain things I take with me. Amen? You know, and there, it just depends. And if, and if we're going on vacation... And uh, how many of y'all realize if it's Sandra and I going on vacation, there's certain things we would take. But if we've got grandkids with us, <laughs> you take different. I mean, you, you sit and think we're going on this and we've got to take certain things. Cupcakes. Yeah. Duct tape. Oh, duct. can't tell their parents that. Now. <laughs> there's a way to keep kids quiet on a trip. But anyway, <laughs> praise the Lord. No, online, I do not use duct tape on my grandkids. All right. Praise the Lord. But, uh, and as well, you know, I've had some people asking me in the midst of all that's going on, uh, some people say, have said, you, you, uh, we're glad you've addressed some things. And then I've had others that say, Pastor, it doesn't seem like you've said all that much, you know, really since November 3rd. And, and I've had some people, you know, asking me some questions. And, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, November 3rd was a bit of a shock to me. Because I just thought it was going to turn out differently. And then there's been things going on since November 3rd. And here, here we're getting close to uh, two months later. And uh, there's all sorts of stuff. There's tons of information out there. There's news sources. There's extra, outside of, you know, the, 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 main, the main, uh, mainstream media. There's all sorts of news. And to be frankly honest with you, I, I've been catching bits of both. Um, and really, uh, and, and my, my wife, who's been, and this is no knock on my wife, but she's been listening to a lot of stuff and sending me, Tim, you need to listen to this. You need to listen to this. And if it's more than 10 minutes, she sent me something the other day. She said, Tim, you need to listen to this. I said, it's an hour and a half long. <laughs> but, and I, I listened to something. And I, I guess my point is, I, I'm aware of things. I've been aware of things. But for me personally, part of, I feel like my responsibility and part of what I have been looking for is something I consider a word from the Lord or, or him to show me something. Not that, that I, I want to say this appropriately, not that there, there couldn't be people that I'd listen to, that, that, not that they're not giving a word of the Lord, but yet I know God knows how to talk to Tim Cross. All right? Now, some people say, God talks to you. Yes, he does. He communicates. And so, to be honest with you, I've been praying about the nation. I've been praying about things going on. But I just felt like I haven't had anything clear from the Lord until Christmas morning. 
And one of the ways God does talk to me is through dreams. Joel chapter 2. In the last days I'll pour out of my spirit and pour it out on all flesh. And your sons and daughters would prophesy, your young men would see visions, and your old men would dream dreams. I guess I'm an old man now. I've, you know, actually, I like the guy that said that really what that means is it's the spiritually mature that get dreams. I like that better. <laughs> but anyway, and, and the Lord, does, he does talk to me through dreams. And Christmas morning, I woke up, and I woke up in a cold sweat because of the dream that I had. And although Dr. Barclay at times told me, he said, just don't tell the specifics of the dream, just tell the interpretation. But this one, I might just tell the specifics of the dream because I, I, I don't think it'll be too crazy. In this particular dream, I'm outside with a group of people, and uh, I guess I'd say off in a distance, you could see storms and tornadoes, which in a dream is fairly significant. But you could see some things off at a distance. And then it was almost like there was a flash of light and there were tornadoes very close. And I found myself doing everything I could to get people into the house and into the basement, into a place of protection. And this is where the dream gets a little funny. My Kelly's daughter, Zoe, which is about, she's about this big, but in the dream she was real small, wouldn't obey, wouldn't come down, so I was having to swat her in the behind. Get in here, get, you know, Zoe, quit goofing off, get in here. And the dream ended. Now, I woke up in a cold sweat. And I was pondering that. And I really, my wife is hearing this for the first time. So sometimes when the Lord shows you something, you, especially something that strikes you, you just, you remember the, in the Christmas story, it said that Mary heard the things that people said and she pondered it in her heart. Well, then we get Dr. Barkley, my pastor, who is a prophet of God. We get his 2021, I predict. I open it up. First thing I and I predict is, Big storms are coming, and they're coming sooner than later. And I say, okay, God, I feel like maybe I've got something. Now, what I'm about to say, can I say it this way? I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope we sail into 2021 and everything just evens out and everything's cool. But as a pastor, in the fact that I have people that listen to my voice and maybe even believe what I say, I feel like I have a responsibility that maybe I ought to warn you a little bit if I feel like the, the Lord's shown me something that I maybe need to warn you about. Amen? And so with that dream, I've been waiting. I've just It's like, Lord, do I say anything? Because the truth is, I don't, know, uh, I don't know what all the news sources you may be looking at, but folks, if you've seen the video in Georgia of after they dismissed everybody out of the voting place and they sort of just waited till everybody was gone and then they started pulling ballots out from underneath the table and stuffing them into the voting machines, and they say thousands, something's wrong. Folks, they say statistically to get 100 votes in a row in a voting machine all for one candidate, the likelihood of that is about 1.25 or 1.3% of that ever happening. To get 1,000, the likelihood of that happening, 1,000 votes in a row for one candidate and not, not another one for the other can. The statistical possibility of that is in the quads, quadzillions. It doesn't happen. And it happened numerous times in this election. 
Now, I have not, now my point, I've known some of this, and my, my, I haven't said a whole lot because I didn't feel like I had permission or I didn't have something from the Lord. I'm just making a point. There are things that have gone on that I'm not so sure Mr. Trump will be the kind of guy to roll over and say no or just give in. Okay? Whether you, you agree with Donald Trump or not, there are anomalies in this election that just don't, they're impossible. Most of us, if we went to bed at midnight on election day, the seven swing states, Donald Trump was winning them all. So, and right now, even when CNN, I, 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 I get headlines, you know, that pop up and, and that's about it. I don't read, I've just tried to stay neutral. But even when CNN was reporting last week the possibility of martial law, my point, everybody say pastor's point. And then I have that dream, we'd better be ready. Are you out there? Now, let me frame it once again. I hope I'm totally wrong. But the Bible says a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. Meaning, a prudent man can see things that might be coming and make some preparation for it. Now, my challenge in doing this, my challenge in, in saying much of anything is, is the challenge because I've sat and I've prayed and i said, God, how do I share this without instilling fear into people? Because that's not my point. And most of y'all that know me, I'm a fairly positive person. I'm a fairly upbeat person. But I've, I've been waiting on, all right, God, God, what do we do? How do, how, how do I communicate and what do I say? And after, after that dream on Christmas morning and then seeing what my pastor, you know, he said, number one, said, a storm's coming. And I thought, God, I saw it. And we need to be prepared. Now, all right, some of y'all, y'all are real quiet now. Now, I am not a big conspiracy person, and I haven't said a ton about this because I wanted to say it at the proper time and be able to communicate what I, what I felt like maybe God had showed me. And so I've been waiting since the election. And there are things that I feel like God has ministered to me that I felt like for me, but, but this one, because tornadoes especially dark tornadoes are not good in a dream that means destruction problems storms are coming now i could interpret getting people in the house saying you need to get yourself to church you need to get yourself in the house of the lord and it may be some of y'all might need it swatted on the behind to get your act together and quit being like rebels that's how i'd interpret having to swat but zoe was about this big so it's like get in here come on are you out there? So, I am doing my best as your pastor to communicate what I sense. And once again, I hope I'm totally wrong. You still need to get in church. And some of y'all, it may not be y'all, but it might be some others that need a spanking. All right. Now, with all that said, say, what do I need to take into... 2021, number one, take your Bible and the promises of God. Say, my Bible and the promises of God. Well, Pastor Tim, I mean, that. duh, I've got a Bible. But can I tell you something? Some of y'all need to turn off the television and open this. You need to be more conscious and more focused on the Word of God and the promises of God than CNN, Fox, QAnon, whatever it is. This ought to be more on your lips than that stuff. Are you out there? 
And if I can say it this way, some of y'all need to sharpen up your sword. And what do you mean sharpen my sword, Pastor Tim? In Ephesians chapter 6, part of the armor of God is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Some of y'all need to, you know, you've been quoting Q, you've been quoting Fox, you've been quoting Rush, you've been whoever your favorite person is, you've been quoting what they said. Can I tell you something? Some of us need to get back to quoting, thus saith the Lord. This is what God says. This is what the promises of God say. So we need to take our Bibles into 2021. Some of you, I know, because we've seen it, you know, I've seen some, some of y'all come to church and you forget your Bibles. And you know what? I guess you can always look on with the person next to you or whatever it is you do, whether you look online or, you know, you've got, but can I tell you something? It's what do you do Monday morning? What do you do Tuesday morning? What do you do Wednesday morning? Or someplace in there, we have got to have the Word of God. We've got to dust it off, and we need to be back in this book, and this needs to be our focus more than the Internet, more than the television, more than the radio, more than what's on our phones, etc. Let's make sure we've got our Bibles going into 2021 because listen we need your greatest protection is not a mask And, and let me say it, let me, let me go on for a second. Your greatest protection is not even a weapon, and I love weapons. I've got weapons. But there, there are more than natural things we're dealing with. We are dealing with spiritual things. And I'm going to tell you something. It was more than a virus that came from China. It was the spirit attached to the virus trying to make us like China. And the greatest defense against the spiritual force is not a gun, it's not a mask, it's the Word of God, it's the Spirit of God, it's taking that Word just like Jesus said and said it is written, it is written, it is written. We need to know what God says, not what CNN says. And I'm not against a mask, I'm not against a weapon, I'm not against whatever you might do in the natural, but someplace in there, we've got to make sure that our confidence is in this book. Because listen to me, whatever you listen to the most is what you will trust the most. That's why Isaiah 26, 3 says this, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Most people know the first part. Hey, I will keep my mind in perfect peace as my mind is stayed on him. The principle on the backside of that is whatever you spend your time thinking on, whatever you spend your time listening to, is what you're going to trust in, you're going to have confidence in. And if we're not listening to this book, if we're not listening to the Word of God, if we're not listening to some preaching, then if all we're doing is listening to the radio, the Internet, etc., that's where our confidence will be. Whatever you set your attention and whatever you set your focus on is what you will trust. In going into this next season, if we're going into a season of storms, we want to make sure we're trusting the right thing in the midst of the storm because if we're not, we may go shipwreck. Thank you, Pastor Tim. You're welcome. Go to the book of Psalms. Oh, I even got a good preaching out of Rob. So, man, praise the Lord. Now, when Sandy says amen, says good preaching, I know I'm doing real good then. <laughs> Psalm 37, one of my favorite Psalms in the whole Bible. Psalm 37. Everybody say number two. What do you need to take into 2021? What's another thing you need to take into 2021? Listen to me. Hope. Hope. Are you all out there? And for sake of time, Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all all joy and hope in believing. The God that we serve is a God of hope. And hope's not like we hope the lions win. (laughs) 
that's false hope. <laughs> that is false hope. I mean, for God. Oh, man. You're a person of faith if you hold it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a better chance of winning the lottery than the Lions winning. Anyway. <laughs> but we're having a little bit of fun. But the Bible word hope is not that type of hope. Remember the Bible word hope, Bible says these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. Now we know the greatest of those is love, but yet hope is a powerful weapon. It's an expectation of good. It's the light at the end of the tunnel that even though I may be going through a bad time now, I know I'm getting to the other side and my God will be on the other side. And even if I'm bloody and bruised, he's going to heal me up, he's going to fix me up, and he's got better in my future because I serve a good God and my God is is good and if I obey him I know somehow he's going to bring me through that's hope and whatever we may be going through in 2021 we've got to take hope into there and I like the, the, and this, and I, this verse came to me, Psalm 37, verse 3. Most people know verse 4, but I love verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Everybody say, feed, feed. on his faithfulness. Has God been faithful to anybody in here besides me? Well, if he's been faithful before, he'll be faithful again today. He'll be faithful tomorrow. He'll be faithful throughout 2021. But can I tell you something? You've got to feed on it. Can I say it another way? Cultivate hope on the inside of you. What do you mean? Uh, you know, during the first shutdown, I sat in my office and I sat around here and to be put in neutral and told you can't really do much of anything and go forward, I sat there in my office and I said, I refuse to be idle. I refuse to sit here and think, my goodness, we can't do anything. And so I started dreaming. Are you out there? Well, what'd you start dreaming? Putting an addition on this side of the building. I called Jeff Martin though. Now he, he's been dealing with some things physically. We haven't seen him in a little bit, but we've been in communication. I said, Jeff, come out here, dream with me. And we've been working on plans to put on the, put an addition on the other side of the building. And he looked and said, Pastor, are you, you sure this is something you need to do? I'm saying, listen, I don't care whether we do it now or five years from now. I need something that gets me looking in the future rather than just looking right now. And we were in here actually about a week ago, and we were finalizing the plans so that we could, we could you know, get some things drawn up. And he just said, he looked at me and he said, Pastor, I've never met anybody like you. I said, well, what do you mean? In the midst of all we're dealing with and you want plans drawn up for an addition in the midst of this, you're crazy. Now he said it with a smile. What am I doing? I'm cultivating hope in the midst of everything. I've, got, I've at least got a dream someplace in the future. If you don't watch it, if you just look at things going on right now, if you get stuck there, it can steal your hope. It can steal your expectation. Someplace you've got to cultivate and you've got to work hope on the inside of you. And if that's nothing else but letting hope build on the inside of me and getting something looking to a better future, if it's nothing but that, that's better than sitting and looking and going, I just don't know what to do. Are you out there? You've got to cultivate some hope. You've got to take hope into the new year. I, I, I've been, I'll be honest with you, as a pastor, I've been struggling a little bit. We've been looking at going into, to, uh, you know, I'm already looking in, 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 at the beginning of December. I'm looking into the next quarter. And we've got plans for next year. We've got things that we've written up. We've got stuff on the, if I can say it this way, we've got stuff on the calendar. We've already looked at the next year. But yet it, it's, it's like, God, how can we step out in confidence? And I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I'm struggling. It's like we even had, we, we, I, just uh, the best we could do is we said, uh, maybe we need to cancel the women's conference. And we did which I didn't like my wife. She didn't take my word for it. She had to hear from Dr. Barkley. She said, Tim, oh, she, yeah, she said just, she, just, she wanted a confirmation. 
I said, so you don't, so you don't trust me. I'm having some fun with my wife. But just because of the uncertainty of, of January. Now what I said is, maybe we'll do the men's and women's conference that we normally do. Maybe we'll do them both in April. My staff was like, oh God, help us. <laughs> but we can save on advertising. We'll advertise, advertise the women's conference on, on, and we'll, we'll give them a week so people get a breather. So we'll do one one weekend, have a weekend off and do the men's conference and we'll just save on advertising. But at least looking forward to something. Are you out there? Everybody say cultivate. cultivate. Hope. Hope. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh man, I'm, 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 I'm hustling to get done with this. Y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah. I know I'm preaching a little fast, but I hope you're listening real fast. But I hope you're also taking good notes as well. Amen. All right. Hey, I got an amen out of Sandy. Praise God. I know I'm doing good now. Third thing, everybody say number three. Three, three. Say the third thing I need to take into 2021. Everybody say grace. grace. Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Everybody say grace. grace. Can I say it this way? Grace is God's ability. Grace is God's help. You know, you couldn't save yourself, so you got saved by grace through faith. Grace saved you. You couldn't save yourself, but there's also a grace. Can I say it this way? I believe that there's a grace for every season we go through. There's a grace. You know, if you ever look, and I, I've heard some Christians, maybe they, they read something like Fox's Book of Martyrs, or, or they hear about Christians that, you know, they were going to face death for, for believing, and they go, I just don't know if I can do it. But there's, a, you know, they, they wonder if they would have the ability to stand, you know, maybe facing death for their faith. But you see, the thing is, there's a grace for people in that. There's a grace for that type of situation. And I, and I, don't, I don't use it as an excuse, but there's a side. I know that when I get into situations that I can't, if I look at myself and I look at my own ability and say, I can't handle this, but if I know in a, in a sense, God's there with me, can I say it this way? I'm going to lean into his grace. I'm going to trust his grace. So whatever comes in the year of 2021, can I tell you something? There is grace for God's people in that year. It's not, it's like the verse says, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. We may go through some tough things. We may go through some hard things. We may go through some things we don't understand. But in the midst of this, we need to lean in to his grace. Because if you don't lean into his grace, his ability, if you don't watch it, we'll lean into fear. Now, folks, I don't know how aware you are of what happened Was it yesterday or the day before, Christmas Day. Are you aware of that bomb that went off in Nashville? Are you aware of where it went off? It went off at a communication hub and knocked out communication in three states. At a 911 center, they stopped flights out of the Nashville airport for hours because all the phones went down. Many of you know I'm an NCIS fan. And they're called Gibbs Rules, if you've watched NCIS. Okay, some of y'all already know where I'm going. One of Gibbs Rules is, there are no coincidences. <laughs> Do you think that just happened to happen? My point, everybody say pastor's point. I don't know what may occur in the weeks and months to come. And I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to build fear in you, but there are markers out there that make you go. In some place, there's a side in the midst of what's going on. We as believers need to lean in that God's grace 
My confidence is not what I have in my home. My confidence is not in all our communication system. Someplace in there, I believe that there's going to be grace for me and there's going to be grace for you in this next year. Some of y'all aren't so sure. You need to take grace. Everybody say grace. Now, everybody say number four. What do we need to take into 2021? Some spiritual toughness. Everybody say spiritual toughness. Where do you come up with that? Read down. <laughs> Look at, well, verse 2. We'll read, well, we'll start in verse 1 again. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who may be able to teach others. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Everybody say endure hardship. Some of us, we need a suck it up buttercup spiritually statement said to us. <laughs> thus, saith, thus saith the Lord. No, no. <laughs> Can I... <laughs> Can I say it this way? Now, Justin, you know, you've been in the military. I know some of y'all been in the military. I, I was in the military for five weeks. <laughs> and I was in basic training in the United States Air Force. I had wrestling practices tougher than that. But anyway, all right. Yeah. <laughs> My. <laughs> but listen, I know... I know this, and maybe this is what I can relate it to now. Uh, whenever I go to the mission field, if, if, I, if I've got to fly to the Philippines or I've got to fly to Uganda, Uganda is going to be 17 hours in an airplane, plus airports, eating airplane plane food. Then once you get there, it's going to be so, uh, so, so long. In the Philippines, it's almost 24 hours. You travel, you get to the Philippines, and then you sit in a vehicle and have to ride four hours to get to the mission center. And it's not riding on highways. You know, and when, when you go to the mission field, some of the places that I've been, uh, you know, if you're going to sit in a canoe for eight hours, which means you're sitting in a canoe for eight hours with, with this is big long canoe with 15 people or so. And if you have to go to the bathroom, there are no gas stations to stop at. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't want to get off of the water because you don't know what's Now, I'm just trying to paint a picture for you, all right? My point, you, you know, and you're going to a city that has no electricity, no showers. The way we took a shower, we didn't totally undress. It just started raining, so we just went out there in our shorts, and we, and while we ate, bats are flying around amongst us at night while we're eating. To, and you don't, I, and people trying to swat the bats, and I said, leave the bats alone. And they said, why? I said, they're eating the mosquitoes that are trying to bite us. My point, everybody say pastor's point. Before you go on that mission trip, you've got to adjust your thinking. And I remember one time, one missionary took me someplace, and he said, and this was as actual words, I wasn't supposed to take you here. And I said, why? He said, because I'm told you should not take American pastors this type of place. I said, why? And he was hemming and hawing, and I sort of hit him, and I said, tell me why. He said, because they're too soft. They can't handle this. <laughs> No. (laughs) 
Now, online, you didn't hear that sacrilegious, horrible comment that we just made. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the guy was telling me he was in the Air Force, too. But anyway. <laughs> but the thing is, is this. But it was because of how I handled that particular situation. And I don't want to get into all we had to do, but I have walked across rope bridges in a downpour over a gorge. That was that trip, and that's what got me on the eight-hour trip on the canoe. Because this, this, this basically is coming. You're not like the average American pastor. You're tough enough to handle this, even though I was in the Air Force. <laughs> My point, most Christians are soft. Okay, praise the Lord. Most Christians are soft. Paul had to tell Timothy, endure hardship. Toughen up, buddy. As a good soldier. And so we need to take some mental toughness into this coming year. That it might not, because basically what that missionary said, most, most pastors want to come to the mission field and go out and work and, and make, feel good working out in the jungle, but then want to go back to a real nice hotel and real good food. <laughs> there is some good food. <laughs> Rob's saying there ain't no good food on the mission field. There is some good food. <laughs> Are y'all out there? I know this is real deep today. But some of y'all, you need to look at 2021 and expect maybe a little bit of tough stuff that you have to go through. I hope, everybody say, Pastor's hope is that I'm absolutely wrong. But you see, if you've caught the news, they're already talking about a new strain. Are y'all out, out there? I don't know if you're ready for the last one. Philippians chapter 3. You know what? I'm not doing as bad as I thought with my time. This is classic for a new year. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I've already attained, I'm already perfected. Thank God, I don't know about you, but I'm glad the Apostle Paul said he hadn't attained everything and wasn't perfect yet, but yet God still used him. Okay. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do... Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead, I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Pastor, what do we need to take uh, uh, take into 2021? I can tell this will be maybe the only one I hit on. I'll say this. I can tell you what not to take into 2021. Don't take your mistakes. Don't take your failures. Don't take your shortcomings. Because, listen, some of us, we it's easier for us to rehearse all of our shortcomings and mistakes than it is to rehearse who we are in Christ Jesus. And can I just show you something? Can I'm, I'm going to... Oh, man. I didn't write it down. I didn't write the verse down. Somebody might look this up. I believe it's the book of 1 Corinthians. It goes through and says, all these things are ours. These are the things God has given us. One thing it said was the world. It says the present and things to come. And a few other things. I'm sorry. But what's interesting is when it says what is ours, it says the present and things to come. 
You know what it doesn't say? The past. Why, Pastor Tim? Your past has been purchased. Your past has been purchased. And to view it any other way than through the blood of Jesus and through redemption, you'll see it wrong. Y'all looking at me funny. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. What verse? All right, go. I want you to read this. 1 Corinthians 3. I'm sorry. I looked it up. And I got so excited about it. And then. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all, for all things are yours. Everybody say, all things are mine. Whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas, these are preachers, they're for you, or the world or life or death, that's, that's a whole lot there. But li listen, what else says? Or things present or things to come, all are yours. Everybody say, my present and the things to come are mine. But my past is God's. I heard it at some point or another, I can't remember as we were coming into the Christmas season. I, I, I may have it wrong, but I heard a report that those that would expect to, to see, I think it was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I can't remember one of the other classic things that were always shown on, around Christmas. They said, you're not going to be able to see that on network TV anymore because they've been bought by Disney. So the only way you can view those is you've got to have a Disney subscription. Can I tell you something? Your past, the movie of your past, has been bought. Your failures, your mistakes have been bought. God has bought them. And I don't think you, should, you can get a subscription to his... Uh, yeah. Some of you, you, you've got some pirated copies. I'm just about to close up. Have any of y'all have any of y'all ever read the account of Abraham, Sarah, and that whole aspect of having Isaac? And if you read it in the book of Genesis, and you read that account, and then you go to Romans chapter 4 and read God's account. If you don't have anything else to do this afternoon, starting about Genesis chapter 12, read to verse 20, and then go to Romans chapter 4, starting verse 17, and go to verse 24, and see how those two stories line up. What do you mean, Pastor Tim? God told Abraham he would give him a son. He would give him a seed. He'd give him a son and that, that it would come through his wife, Sarah. And the New Testament says Abraham was strong in faith. He did not waver at the promise of God. He gave glory to God knowing what God had promised he was fully able to perform. This is Abraham and, you know, Sarah come and say, it doesn't seem to be working here, Abe. How would you like to have Hagar and see if you get a seed through her? And you find in Genesis 19, God shows up to Abraham the year, basically, and he he's basically says, a year from now, the promise will be fulfilled. And Abraham said that Ishmael might live before you. I mean, here's Abraham, even a year before his promise is about to take place, is still battling, wondering, he still seems to be wavering. But yet in the New Testament, God says he was strong in faith, didn't waver at the promises of God. Can I say it this way? God buying the past, cleaning it up. Are, I wonder what he's done with your past to clean it up. Maybe he scrubbed a little bit out of it. <laughs> I like 
online, I think Rob, Rob Lippard said somewhat like Hillary Clinton's emails, but anyway. <laughs> but listen to me. Rob Lippard said that. I didn't. <laughs> Just in case Bill and Hillary are watching, you know. Rob, it was good knowing you. <laughs> If you, if, if, if you spend your time looking at your mistakes and failures, it will zap strength out of you. It will zap courage out of you. Can I give you just one more? Everybody say just one more. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Three times God says this to Joshua. Joshua, be strong and courageous. Hey, Josh, be strong and courageous. Hey, Josh, be strong and courageous. Take courage into 2021. Charge into 2021. Now, let me get extremely practical. And, and this was some of what I hedged, and I felt like, with what I saw, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to encourage this. And you do with it what you want. In light of some of the things that I've said today. I wanted to preach faith to you and then I wanted to get real practical. This is my encouragement as your pastor. I might encourage that you might have maybe a couple weeks to a month's worth of food stored up at your home just in case are you out there yeah. and that doesn't have to take a ton I, I'd advise you to have water as well and if you got animals you better have some extra dog food cat food well all right are you are y'all out there and I'm not saying you have to go spend $1,000 or something. But you can go get some oatmeal and a five-pound bag of pancakes and some syrup. You got breakfast. Go get some peanut butter and jelly. Keep it simple for lunch. If you got a freezer, go, go buy 10, 20 pounds of hamburger. You can make tacos, hamburger helper, get some tuna, make some tuna. I, my, my point is, it doesn't have to be filet mignon. Keep, everybody say, keep it simple. And you know what? If nothing happens, you've got it. Okay? And ladies, this is something to buy your feminine products, buy, buy some extra toilet paper. I just don't want to see you at Walmart with three carts full of toilet paper, all right? But now listen to me, this, this is the toughest one for me to say, but I'm going to say it. Folks, if there's any type of civil disturbance, and I don't like saying this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. If there's any type of civil di disturbance, if you call the police, they aren't coming. They're going to be dealing with civil, with, with things going on. And as your pastor and those watching online, what does it take to protect your family? Now, you interpret that to whatever way brings you peace. Okay. Now, man, Pastor, we were doing real good till you got to the end. I'm sorry. But I would rather share those type of things with you because what happened in Nashville knocked out communication. 
And most of us, can I ask this simple question? How many of y'all still have a landline? Oh, I was surprised, boy. More, more of y'all than I expected. But most of us, like my home, we don't have a landline anymore. What if, what if things are knocked out for a period of time? And I'm sorry that maybe this is church, but yet where else and how else can I say this mixed with faith? Amen? So I guess as your pastor, to sum all this up and put a bow on it kind of thing, because of the dream I had, because I've been struggling with this, because of that dream, I go, and I woke up in a cold sweat. And I thought, all right, God, I feel like I now have permission to say some things. So, I'm gonna, so I've said them. And as your pastor, I trust I built faith into you as well by preaching the word. But at the same hand, I might say to you, it may be wise, especially come January 6th, to at least be prepared because that's when the electors show up and I don't know what all is going to take place. I really don't. Um, and I have been told that the military, they have the military in place even now. They've been positioned for some form of martial law. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that to put fear in you. I'm, I'm saying that to say I don't know what that may look like. And I hope nothing happens. But if it does, if there's a, there's three levels of martial law. And I don't think we'd go to the immediate level or the, the greatest level, which is everything shut down, you stay in your house. I don't think we would start there. But if there was some sort of civil uprising because of what happened in Nashville, I don't know if that was a precursor. For things come, something just doesn't sit right about what happened in Nashville. All that to say, if something does happen, I would much rather have y'all prepared that you go, Pastor told us a storm was coming, praise God, we, we can honker down. And it might do you well, I'm just, I'm just sharing some things that I might say to you might do you well to go to the bank and get a few hundred dollars or something or most of us use debit cards now but it might do you well to have some cash on hand whatever makes you feel comfortable now I'm not I'm not saying go empty out your savings account or anything like that but it may do you well to have some cash on hand and if nothing happens you can go put it back in the bank Okay? Or yeah, Rob will take it. <laughs> yeah, put it in the offering. I don't know. All right. Just me trying to be a good pastor to you. I, amen. All right. Did y'all get anything at all out of this? <laughs>